Good morning, Quadcopter101 here. And before we start, I gotta give my shout out to my notification squad winners. That's uh, Akshat here and Cam Childers. Akshat here and Cam Childers are my winners, both of them. So congrats, and there's your shout out. Hope you enjoyed that. <laughs> I know my notification squad likes these shout outs, so I'm gonna continue doing it. But uh, what I got for you today is the SJRC S70W. Now, you know, in a previous video, I predicted this year 2018 will be the year the year of the cheap gps quadcopters we're going to be seeing gps incorporated on uh toy toy grade quadcopters and with that in mind let's start off with this one this is the sjrc s70w looking at the s70w it looks very similar to the um sema x8c actually sema x8c looks similar to the early dji dji phantoms so you know this is yeah one of these uh, phantom clones old phantom clones but uh, what's cool about it is it includes gps as i mentioned here actually a, a double gps system supposedly for improved accuracy um, on top of that it uses uh, it is a brushed motor quadcopter but being a brushed motor quadcopter it uses the cma x8c batteries or cma x8c motors which are real really easy to change in case you have one go bad on you you just pop these two screws here and pop two screws on the top and it unplugs and you plug a new one in and re reinsert the screws and you're good to go on top of the propellers the propellers are cma x8c propellers so uh, sjrc was thinking here you know there are a lot of these motors available out there in the wild and propellers available so it's easy replacement um, you'll be able to find uh, replacement motors cheap and easy to replace now this battery is a proprietary battery let me see if i can get it out here my fingers are cold today and it's kind of hard to wiggle this out but i'll get it out eventually there we go <laughs> it is a, it is a 7.4 volt but how many milliamp hour i can't remember here 2500 milliamp hour 7.4 volt uh, uh battery uh you use to charge it now this is unusual let me plug it back in here but to charge it you use a 5 volt uh phone charger micro usb port phone charger to charge it so that's pretty neat in itself there you know you don't need a special charger you can use your phone charger to charge it um, it has an on off button here you just do a quick press to turn it on and a long press to turn it off and uh what other things to talk about is its camera 720p hd camera on a swivel gimbal um this gimbal is remote controlled so you can point down or up and it records that 720p hd video directly to a micro sd card and finally, it transmits that video via Wi-Fi to your phone, so you can actually view real-time in-flight video. So it records the SD card and transmits the video to your phone. Uh, let's go over its controller. This is its controller. It does have follow me mode, supposedly, folks. Uh, I don't know if it'll work with this or if it works directly with the phone, but according to the instructions you press this button here and it's, it's supposed to follow you and it also has headless mode which you activate by pressing this button here rates of the quadcopter you can increase or decrease how fast it's it's uh, speed is uh, by moving this swivel knob right here um, it does have return to home since it's a gps quadcopter on off switches here automatic takeoff and landing in here and you can start and stop the recording to the micro sd card not to your phone but to the micro sd card by pressing this button here for video and this button here for photos and you can move that swivel that gimbal up or down by moving this button here so that's it uh, let's go for a flight of this thing and see how it performs hope you enjoy this flight okay to start up this quadcopter you put it on a flat level surface and uh, press its on off button one quick press that's all you need let's see if you can see the lights but there we go we got it started then we turn on the transmitter by pressing its on off switch and we bind it by an up down as usual as with most quadcopters now you need to calibrate the compasses or the uh, magnetic compass on the quadcopter and to do such you bring both sticks up and inboard and that sets it to compass calibration mode you get rapid blinking of the lights and what you need to do we're going to hold it like this you need to do a horizontal turn one or two times until the rapid blinking changes okay now we got steady light in the back 
the, the back lights stop blinking. Next thing you do is point the nose upward and do a rotate with the nose up until the lights turn solid. I think it's nose up. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it has to be nose down. Hold on. <laughs> no, lights have turned solid. So there we go. Now you put it on the ground and this light right here is purple right now. Once it turns solid blue and it just did, it has satellite lock. So it does get a rapid satellite lock, which is telling me this has dual GPS and I'm pretty sure it does. So we are ready actually to fly in GPS mode. But before we do, I'm going to hook it up or hook up the app to the Wi-Fi so we can see the in-flight video. So hold on folks. Okay, we are ready to go here. First off, I'm going to start video recording by pressing that button there. And it gives an annoying beep though while it's recording, but it is recording now. And we're going to hit the automatic takeoff button. And see how well its GPS holds its position. And it actually seems to hold its position well. Let me get go over here. Going up a bit higher. And I'd show you my uh, sh <laughs> my shirt today, folks, but um, <laughs> it's cold out today, so I'm leaving my jacket on. But let's see how well it can do. We're going to fly over toward the uh, trains today. We have the trains here today. So pushing forward and going up. And we'll see how well its uh, Wi-Fi signal works. Uh oh, and it's coming back. Wait a minute. Is that the range? We are at a distance of 26 meters, so let's go out further. Pushing forward again. Notice we oh, 30 meters. It doesn't want to go further than 30 meters. And uh, that's because we're using Wi-Fi, probably. Let's go off in this direction, then. Let's see how far I can actually go with this before it stops itself. Okay, so it's, it's losing signal from the transmitter at about, uh, what's it saying, 30 meters? So, so that, that's about its max range with this, uh, using the transmitter in combination with the Wi-Fi of your phone. Let's see about going up higher, how about that? Coming overhead, plopping it right there, and then moving that camera downward. Which way's done? Wrong way. No, it's coming down. Is that the max? I guess that's max down. No, there, there's max down. I see me. <laughs> so you can move the camera up and down like I'm doing right now. And moving the camera back up. It makes that beeping as you're working or using the uh, gimbal. Let's bring it down a bit. So, limitation of this quadcopter, let's move it up higher, is that you really can't go very far because it's using Wi-Fi. Let's see how high you can go before it'll stop. Well, it can go high. <laughs> it just doesn't let you go far horizontally. Okay, how high are we? According to the uh, meter here, we're about uh, we're about 30 meters up. <laughs> Let's go higher. Let's see if we can go past 30 meters. No, it blocks you at 30 meters. So 30 meters out and 30 meters up. That seems to be the limitation. I don't know if that's GPS limitation or if that's, uh, you know, geofence. I think it's a geofence, folks. No, I'm not sure that can be turned off. Let's bring it down and let me look in the um, menus and see if there's a geofence that I can turn off. Let me bring it down. Bring it down. And I'm going to bring it over to the pad. And land it. I guess I should hit the land button. There, I hit the land button. Okay, I'm going to go into the menus. I think there was a geofence now that I'm remembering it. <laughs> Let me stop the video. Stop the beeping. And looking in the geofence, or in the settings, if I can get it though, there is a beginner mode. And flight distance, 30 meters, 30 meters. Let's move that out 
all to 100 meters. At 200 meters. Flight altitude at least 100 meters. And return altitude is fine, 25 meters. And hitting save. So there is a geofence. <laughs> and I was <laughs> bumping into that. So let's do that takeoff again and start the video again. This time we'll go down the, the road. See if we can go out to 100 meters before we bump into that geofence. Or what did I set it? 200 meters? So yes, there is a geofence that you are going to need to adjust going up higher. It's still going up, Bob. Let's fly diagonally across the desert. Now it's working fine. <laughs> What's my range? 80 meters. What's my battery power? We're still good in battery. Going. I'm going to see if I can go over toward the uh, trains today. We have the Trona train here with us today. And now it's flying nice and far. It's actually kind of nice, folks. And I do have still a GPS signal, or Wi-Fi FPV signal. How far out am I? 150 meters, 142 meters. That's not bad. Okay, let's do a return to home from over there. Let's stop it right there. And let's rotate around the, the area from over there. And let's do that return to home. Automatic return to home. Let's see how well it works. This is actually a very nice quadcopter, folks, and I think it's reasonably priced, too. Kind of nice. Coming back. I still got Wi-Fi FPV. It beeps as it comes back. Now, the one thing I want to try next... Look at that thing. <laughs> it comes back fast. Get out of its way as it comes down. Or it's climbing. <laughs> I don't know why it's climbing. And then it descends. Here's its return to home. Where's it going to land? Okay. Let it land. Let's see what it does. The CMX 8C style battery in it. Okay, turning the camera off. And uh, return to home. Do I got to turn that off? Yeah, you got to turn that off too because it keeps on beeping. Okay, let's take to the air again. This time I'm going to hit the follow me button. Hitting take off. And uh, put the sun behind me or in front of me. Going up a bit so you can see me. I'm raising the camera. Or using the camera right there. Let's hit that uh, follow me button, see if it actually works. It did something. I think it's following, yeah, it's following me. I'm looking at the screen here. This is a pretty awesome quadcopter, folks. Uh-oh, it's doing toilet bowl while it's following me. Doing toilet bowl while it's following me. Let's break out of that. Breaking out of follow me. Let's go over forward a bit. Right about there. Let's go a little higher and a little further out. Uh oh. I think its battery might be getting low. Let me check its battery. Yeah, its battery is low. It said, come on now. So the follow me did work. Just a quick little demonstration of it. Let's go back over to the pad and I'll give you a sum it up. That's its battery. Follow me was working. <laughs> and I'm not sure if the toilet bowl was caused by being its low battery right now. Doing the uh, automatic landing. Yeah, let's see how safely it lands. It's got a little bit of a breeze. There you go. That's its auto landing. So you know this ain't this ain't too shabby. Let me uh, give you a, a rundown on it. 
Um, that was its flight time with the battery. I hope they come out with replacement batteries for this because this is not a, not too shabby a bird. Um, it has a reasonably good FPV Wi-Fi range. Uh, and, um, there is an issue there. Well, it's a quick issue. It's an easy to fix issue. It has uh, geofence turned on that you can easily turn off in the app or adjust in the app. Um, it was set to 30 meters and 30 meters up and 30 meters out, but I quickly adjusted that and sent it out. I went out to about 140 meters or so, I'm guessing, and still had good Wi-Fi reception, Wi-Fi FPV reception. Um, additionally, gee, I hope I remembered to re record that last time, but uh, additionally, uh, it has follow me that you can activate by pressing this button here. I saw a little bit of toilet bowl in that follow me, but I'm not sure if if that was caused by uh, the GPS inaccuracies, probably a GPS inaccuracy of my phone if it's using the phone to follow me. Uh, but uh, it did have a little bit of toilet bowl there. And uh, if it's using the phone to follow me, um, it, you don't know what's really causing the toilet bowl. It's either, this has a dual GPS system. It seems to be pretty darn accurate. So I'm guessing that toilet bowl was probably caused by inaccuracies of my phone's GPS. Um, and 720p HD camera with a swivel. So we'll see how well that video came out. But all in all, I kind of like this. I really do. Um, it's it's a good, cheap way to get a GPS quadcopter, a reasonable GPS quadcopter, depending on how well that camera is. Uh, the X8C always has been a, a you know, an X8C style quadcopter would have always been a great GPS quadcopter. Uh, SEMA tried to do that, but seemed to fail. <laughs> but this one seems to be a better version than what SEMA had tried to do. So, hope you enjoyed this flight, this Quadcopter 101. Signing out with the S70W.